Hello there guys, it's Maxo Diddley here, and today I am here with another Java tutorial to help you get that A in your practical exam. Today we're going to be here with reading from a file and searching for a particular record. So more than likely in the exam, you're going to have to um, enter a certain detail, which will be a field for a particular user, and then the program will probably try and find it. If it finds it, return that whole record to the user. If not, say that the record couldn't be found. And today we're going to be teaching you how to do that. It may sound complicated, but this is a method that uses things you should already know about reading from a file and manipulating while loops. So let's get right into it. Firstly, we're going to have to create um, a private scanner. So we're going to do private um, static scanner. And we're going to put a capital S before scanner because I forgot to. And I'm going to call it X. Why are we calling it X? Well, we're going to be typing this scanner object quite a few times, and X is just quicker to type, and if you annotate it, what it does, it's going to be fine. You want to right-click on scanner and go to fix imports, and we import the java.util.scanner. Scanner is basically an object that gets input. It's kind of like a guy, the guy who will be searching through your yellow books for a certain phone number, for an example. In this case, this will be the thing that actually searches the file for your record. And it's static because we're going to be using it in static methods. If you're using it in non-static methods, you would get rid of that static. So let's go into our main method. We'll do string file path, and we're going to set that to tutorial.txt. That's going to be the file path that we're going to be checking for our record. I'm going to do string search term and that's going to be equal to 5464 make the search term whatever you want this is basically going to be the user input for checking a certain thing in a record basically now we're going to make our method for reading the record so we're going to do public static vo void read record we're going to do string search term string file path curly brackets. So what does this method currently do? It's a public method. It's void. Therefore, it does not return any values because we don't need it to. It's called read record and it's going to take in a string called search term and a string called file path. String search term will take the value of whatever search term is, which in this case is 5464. String file path will take the value of whatever file path is, which in this case is tutorial.txt. So we would be passing the values of 5464 and tutorial.txt into the method when we call it in this case. Now we're going to have um, a try and catch. Uh, if I can just put it in properly. I, I might have misspelled exception there. Oops. So anyway. Quickly going to explain what a try catch is. Try and catch is where you try and do a bit of code in here. If it succeeds, move on beyond and go down underneath the try catch and do all that code. If the code here fails, do whatever is in the catch instead of having Java crash or the program crash. And which is quite nice, makes your program look more professional. So in here, we're going to first do x equals new scanner, if I can type correctly, new file, file path. So, oh, we need to right click on file and click on fix imports. So, what does this line of code do? So basically, we've got our um, scanner object, our little guy is going to be reading it, and we're basically telling him the file to read from. So it's kind of like you've ordered someone to find a record, like a phone number in a Yellow Pages book, and you're giving the guy the Yellow Pages book to search for in a way. That's basically like what this, this is doing. Now this is where we're going to be saving you a lot of time. We're going to use x.useDelimiter, if I'm saying that right, I don't know. And we're going to have a brackets, Speech marks, we're going to do a square bracket, comma, slash n, close square bracket, and semicolon, del e, 
Oh, I, mi I, I might have misspelled it. A delimiter. Sorry, not delimiter. I don't know why I said that. So, what is a delimiter? Well, basically, it's a sequence of one or more characters used to specify the boundary between separate and independent regions of plain text or other streams of data. Simply, it's used to separate things in a file. It's used to separate fields in a record in a text file. What do I mean? And I will demonstrate what I mean using um, using the tutorial.txt. We've got a, we got a file here, three records, and there are three fields per record. We have the member ID, the name, and the age. And basically, we need a way to tell Java where each field starts and begins. Because basically, Java and computers in general don't have any common sense, and we need to be completely clear in what we want. So by default, um, it'll be set to using a space, but we don't want that. So we use a comma to separate each field, and also a new line. As obviously, if we didn't have a new line separating each field, Bob's age would be 234345 instead of just 23. Because it's basically the same as having that. But we, have a, we also tell Java to have a new line and a comma for our splitters. So basically, a delimiter is just a delimiter. I, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's just something that's used to split up fields because Java is too dumb to realize what splits up a field or not. And in this case, it's going to use commas. And there's a the little thing there. If you still don't understand what that is, um, ask in the comments. I'll give you like a one-to-one -one thing if you need help. So now we got that out of the way, we don't, we don't need to bother worrying about reading strings and splitting out where commas are. Because now we can just handle this file like we normally would because now we've, instead of using the space key, which is the default delimiter or delimiter, we've got it to commas and new lines. Anyway, now we're going to do a while loop. And you should know what a while loop is. X dot has next. And, oh, wait, guys, I actually forgot to do um, a couple lines of code at the top. Sorry about that. We want to go back to the top of our public static void read record, and we want to just set a couple variables. Boolean found equals false, and we'll do string id equals the string name one equals the and string a g equals the. By the way, we can have as many lines of code on one line, as long as if they're split by the semicolon. So it actually doesn't, we could, that's why I declared all these three on the same line, just for neatness, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, these are just the record, the fields we're going to be reading from the file for each record. And Boolean found is basically saying, have we found the record with the detail the user's looking for? By default, it's set to false because when the person searching through the yellow books is searching for a phone number, when he first is, first is given the book, he has not found the record yet. In fact, he hasn't even opened the book yet. And by default, he hasn't found it. And then when he does find it, found it to be true. It's the same case in this. Java has not started to search the file, and therefore it can't find the record yet because it hasn't even started searching the file. That's why we set it to false by default. And these are just fields, like I said. Anyway, back to our little while statement down here. After the and, we want to put not found. Then after that, we want to put our semicolons. Now I'm going to write what's in the loop before explaining it. So we're going to do id equals x.next. Then we'll do name1 equals x dot next. Why have I put a zero there? I, I will never know. Then we will do age equals x dot next. Then we'll do if id dot equals search term. Um, if I misspell search terms. Oh yeah, I misspelled. Oops, I put a capital S there by accident. I don't know why I did that. Sorry about that. We'll put our semicolon on, so we'll put found equals true. So, this while loop might look big, clunky, and messy, but let me break it down. 
This while loop will continue to repeat itself if two conditions are true. Well, if two things apply, let's say. So x.hasNext basically means Java is going to check if there is anything left to read in the file. So let's say we're, okay, I'll actually get back to that in a second. And exclamation mark found basically means is found equal to false. We could do is found equals false, but that takes up more lines of code and I'd rather just do not found. You can do that if you like having found equals false, but I'd rather do not found. By default, when you put something in like a condition checker, Java will just check for true if you put nothing with that. And if you, and you can actually put an exclamation mark before it to basically mean the opposite of true, which means false. So we're making sure that's true and that is also false. Then we're basically going to be getting our three fields. X.next basically gets the next, just reads um, the ne all the text until the next comma or new line. So, and we do this three times for the ID, the name one and the age. Make sure they're in the correct order, otherwise you'll get messed up val data values for each thing, which we don't want. So let me talk you through that, how that bit little bit works. We've opened the file, we're going to read line one. We're going to read the ID first. ID equals x dot next. We're going to read up to the first comma. So we're basically going to store one, two, three, four in ID. Then we're going to set the value of name one to whatever's next. So Java's now going to read Bob. It's going to basically just read up until this comma. Now we want to get the value for age, and we've said x dot next. So Java's going to read up until the end of the line, because there's no comma on the end of this line. And it'll read out 23, because after that it's a new line. We can also do it for 4, 3, 4, 5. So after that, we do x dot next because we're at the top of the loop again, and Java's going to read the ID, and it's going to be x dot next. So it's going to basically be reading until it reaches the comma, which in this case it will read up four three four five. Java again is going to do x dot next for the value of name one again, and it's going to go for Frank. So it's just going to read all of Frank because it'll read up until the next comma, and it'll do the same for for this last bit. It'll read 55 as that is everything between this comma and the comma there. And I won't bother to explain the last one. I hope that makes you understand what's actually going on here. I might have poorly explained it, I don't know. And basically, this is just checking if, because basically the search term that we're going to have to use input is the ID, which is the first thing for each record. We're basically saying, is the ID that just being read equal to the search term. If it is, then we've obviously found the correct record and we want to set found to true. So then it will terminate this loop so then we can move on to telling the user that we found it. If we never actually, if this is always equal to false because we don't find the record, eventually we'll run out of um, lines to read and x dot has next will equal to false and not found will also just be equal to false and these two have become true overall, therefore this while true becomes a thing and then we go down here. And also replace the word true just then with the word false because I just messed up the two words. So let me re-say that. If there are any lines left, this becomes false. This by default is like, this, this is true. So then, and a true and a false becomes a false overall and therefore the false will terminate the loop because by default Java will want it to be true to loop through the loop. If you don't understand it, you can ask a comment or look up logic table stuff or just accept it and just learn how to do that. Now we're just going to print the, the results to users. So do if found, so basically if found is true, J option pane dot show message dia dialog. I can't actually type. Then we'll do null. Then we'll do ID plus na name plus 
name one plus age plus age. And we'll right click on the option pane to fix the imports. And then we want to copy and paste that in for our else statement. And then we can put in here record not found. So that's all for this. Oh, and we could put something in here in the in the catch down here if you wanted to, saying error, because this will happen if if reading the file fails and we don't want the program to crash. So that's that. And then we got one more thing to do: read record search term file path. Basically, we're calling the calling the method to read and search the file, and we're passing the values of search term and file path into the method, so the method has the data it needs to perform the search. Now we're going to run it. So basically, the search term is five four six four. So that's the ID we're checking for, and no one has the ID of five four six four. So therefore, it should say we can't find anything. Wait, no, 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 I'm wrong, actually. We have um, a different file. I'll actually find that now. There's our tutorial file. So we'll actually be searching this file, and 5464 should return 5464 bill and 23, as this I this um, search term is for an ID, and the ID is here, so therefore Java should print the whole record. Let, let's test it out. And um, we've printed out the details for bill. We didn't print out the ID because we actually forgot to type that there. So you, you get the idea though, guys. Like we could do pl plus ID plus name and then that would actually print his ID as well. We kind of forgot about that. I'm very sorry. Yeah, let's see. Look, it's, everything's there. Now we're going to check it. Now we're going to do it to an ID that doesn't exist. So we're going to do blah, blah, blah. And it's going to just say error, record or record not found, sorry, in this case because of the if statement. And we're going to try one more. We're going to do one, two, three, four, and that should return the duck, details of the duck. ID one, two, three, four, name duck, age 56. And this does match the details in the file. So anyway guys, that's all for this tutorial. Be sure to leave a like in the comment if you enjoyed and share this with your friends if you want to know how to search through a record, no, search for a file for a certain record based on a user input. You can add many more records, just make sure the order here does match the order in which each field is in the, in the file for each record, otherwise you will get different values to different variables in the wrong order and we don't want that but common sense should mean you don't avoid that no it means you should avoid that so if i've been weird and talking weirdly or and i haven't explained something properly or i've been repeating myself i am quite tired and sorry for this being a long video i just wanted to try and explain this as thoroughly as i can so you understand how to do this as i feel this is the hardest thing in the exam Anyway guys, thanks for being a great audience and be sure to stay tuned this weekend as I'll actually be going through a whole past paper talking through how to do everything and why I've done this with full annotation. So it is worth you check that out. Anyway guys, thanks for being a great audience and we will see you next time.